very well said. Keyshawn, your thoughts on this? Well, first of all, I like her. So do I. So, so there's a lot of people going to dislike Haley now. Mm -hmm. she, she stepped in it, and I appreciate that for she sticking did. up for her teammates and being a part of that. But when you start talking about certain, and, and, and I hate having to deal with this type, type of stuff, Skip, all the time. But when you start talking about regions in different areas and perspectives of how people think, yep. you know, the individual that wrote the, the article in the LA Times obviously feel, uh, felt a certain way at that particular time when they wrote the article about LSU's basketball program compared to, compared to UCLA's. Yep. Where at UCLA, they're the, you know, they're the sweethearts, they're American sweethearts. They're the, the, the milk and cookies, as they refer that's, to it that's as. That's what he and, wrote. And yep. you look at it and he says that the uh, debutants, the dirty, I, now first of all, I don't even know what the hell that is. I don't know. Okay, either. other than something that they use in the South, and that, that's a South thing, it's a regional thing in that particular region. I had to look it up to find out. You know, obviously I know what Louisiana hot sauce is. I got probably got about three or four bottles sitting in my cabinet at home right now, and I do use it. Mm -hmm. Now you say, well, is it racist? I don't, I don't know if the individual that wrote the article is a racist or not, because I don't know him. I have no idea. I've never interacted with them at all. But I can certainly tell you what it is. It's what I call dog whistling. Okay? You can't have it both ways. You can't, and what I mean by this is, you can't all of a sudden say these things, but all of a sudden say, no, no, I didn't, I didn't mean it that way to protect your job. So you redact something. If you didn't mean it to be hurtful, you wouldn't be redacting anything. Well, the LA Times redacted it. Yeah. Yes, but mm -hmm. I work for the LA Times, so therefore that means that I redacted mm -hmm. it. Just because the overall uh, scope in the corporation other people says, no, no, we can't do that. The editor who go, and you a columnist, you know how this stuff works. You wrote for many years. You're going to send in your work. They're going to do what they need to do. And then they're going to stamp it of approval. Somebody approved it. Somebody, right, Skip? Mm -hmm. Somebody had to approve it. It wasn't just, I'm writing it and I'm putting it in the newspaper myself. It went to the editor. The editor saw it, read it, and signed off on it. I'll hold off until Paul goes, and then you I'll know. Watch. And so, when you when you look at it, it's misinformed, it's ill misinformed, mm. and it's ridiculous that we still, in this day and age, have to deal with this sort of behavior by people. The dog whistling and the little subtle things we see it all the time in sports, man. It's been going on for years. It ain't nothing new. If it's a if it's a white football player who happens to be sneaky fast and really good and in and out of the building, the first one, and he's smart. His dad's grew up as a coach. Oh, don't, don't, don't just say the dude's good, man. Where he's a hard worker. Where the other guy, God-given talent, he really didn't have to work. It's all those little bitty things that they put out there in the universe. Now, this team, obviously, is going on, and they're going to play tonight in a big-time game against Iowa. It'll be the most watched game It'll ever. It'll be, yeah. well, I, I'm going to be watching, waiting for watch another it. game, but I'm going to watch it too with Paul, probably. But in the end... It's ridiculous that this is even being talked about. Yeah. And I understand Kim Mokey, some of these writers and stuff, they, they're kind of coming at her about her career and who she is. She goes at them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but, that, but I'm, well, she should. Okay. If they trying to assassinate her character mm -hmm. and who she is, you absolutely should protect yourself. All right, go, Paul. I see as this trying to create a narrative and when one team looks a certain way, as the LSU Tigers look, you have black women who are demonstrative, who talk trash. And on the other hand, other teams, if they don't do that, they're looked at as more classy. But look, LSU has won a championship <laughs> this way. I mean, this is sports. And we got, what we got to understand in sports, you're going to have different personalities, people who come from certain places. Like for me, for an example, in the men's game, this is every day. This is every I, I was, day. I was, now... to, I was about to say, a whole lot of men's teams have won championships being that way, right? Exactly. And so and now that it's brought are. to the girls' game, yeah. and now we finally spark some interest in all of this. Have we? I mean, it's on a whole nother... Let's skip. I, I'm not... I'm so anticipating watching this so game tonight. Yep. And for these articles to come out and just try to change the whole narrative and paint LSU as the team that's wearing a black hat, that's fine. I, I actually love it. You know, I was one that wore the black hat. And so 
you're trying to say good versus evil, black hat, whatever. LSU has taken on the personality of their head coach and they've won that way. Yeah, we see the hand waving from Adrian Reese, the, the ring finger, and the other teams are not doing these things. So that's classless. Well, listen, if this is going to produce you winning and doing it how you want to do it, then keep going, Angel Reese. Keep going, Kim. Mm. Because I love it. I know you guys are going to watch. And I'm going to embrace them. But I don't see any racism in all of this. So what I see is a spark in the game that's much needed. And I'm glad that they're able to play the villain role and just continue to go out there and win and do it with a smile on their face. I've only seen this type of thing one other time that I can remember as I was thinking about it is in 88, the Catholics versus the criminals. Oh, that's college the only football. college football <laughs> mm -hmm. with Miami played Notre Dame. That's and, true. and it was the Catholics versus the criminals because it was so-called allegedly questionable character you know, Catholics versus the convicts. 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 Right. Criminals, convicts. convicts, I'll get yeah, it right. Whatever, it's close enough. You're going to jail regardless of the way, okay. they, the way they made it sound. That's mm -hmm. what, what no, it was. But that's right. the only time I've ever seen that, Skip. Other than that, I've never seen this before. Okay, allow me to make the most obvious statement in the history of the world. Is racism still alive in hell out there in our country? You better believe it is. So we accept that as a given before we plunge into this. Now, to your point, this writer at the LA Times, is he racist? I have no idea. I don't know him. I don't know him. I do. All right, at least I should say, I used to know the LA Times because I worked there back in the day when it was a top five sports section in the United States of America. We thought it was the top one sports section. Trust me on this. When I turned in whatever piece of work I did, it would get edited by at least three people, yes. and there's no way dirty debutantes would get through. Yes. Okay, I'd never heard of dirty debutantes either. Kim Mulkey said she looked it up, and she was just, like, astounded by it. At one point, it was used as the title of a porn show, some kind of porn show. So anyway, it's got a terrible, oh con well, it's got a <laughs> right. terrible connotation to it. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the point is, how can that get through? in today's LA Times. Okay, I do know this reading the bio of the beat writer. He's the beat writer for UCLA. He wrote a book about for UCLA fans about things to love about UCLA sports. So as you know from your time plane, you know from your time plane, this wasn't a columnist writing this. This was the beat, beat writer, writer who clearly loves yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. Corey Close is the UCLA coach and she's the flip side for journalists to Kim Mulkey because she's come one, come all, she embraces. She's easy to talk to. She's always accessible. She's willing. She's a great quote. She's a quote machine. And Kim is difficult for the media because she doesn't take nothing off nobody. Right. So if she doesn't like you, she's going to stiff arm you. And if she doesn't like what you write, she's going to attack back. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, a lot of journalists don't love that. So that was the crux to me of the motivation of his article is, well, here's Corey Close versus Kim Mulkey, and it's sort of good versus evil mm -hmm. in a journalist's point of view, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now Dirty Debutantes gets through and it becomes the, the, the flashpoint of this article where you're like, and, and it comes across as racist to me. So that, that is a racist description. And yet the LA Times, after I was ashamed of the LA Times, they did have the good sense to go back in and take that phrase and several, I, I think they took the good versus evil out. I think when I reread it and repost it, cleaned up, okay? So at least they did that much. But again, it's such a flashpoint that it creates the, the narrative of, well, is the world racist against LSU? And is there some out there? Sure there is. Now let's look at the bright side of this. I was there courtside in 1979 when Magic Johnson and Larry Bird played, and trust me on this, it broke all the ratings record because for the first time in a long time, we had a white guy who looked like he was gonna be really good, right? He was pretty good. He was pretty good, and he was pretty good at Indiana State, and we had a black superstar who was as charismatic as any who ever came down the pike. Mm -hmm. to, to this moment, has there ever been any more charismatic than Magic Johnson? I don't think no. so. I, I haven't, I don't know why. So you had Magic versus Bird in Salt Lake City in the national championship game, and it blew the top in off the Salt ratings. Lake City. Yeah, in Salt Lake City. How about that? How about that for a little in irony, Salt right? In Salt right. Lake in City. Okay. 
And, and you can't tell me that part of the motivation for watching it was that white people said, well, we finally got somebody who can actually, he's not great white hype, he's actually great white hope, right? He was legit. So tonight we have Caitlin Clark, the greatest scorer in the history of women's college basketball, and she is legit. Yeah. She can flat out play. LSU is just as legit. And last year in the championship game, <laughs> LSU wiped out mm -hmm. Caitlin Clark and Iowa. And so now we got a rematch here. So let's talk about on court for a second here. L I mean, sorry, Iowa is a point and a half favorite in this game. And I, I don't get it. W what are your thoughts on the matchup? It's a great matchup. It's great for TV. I, I think LSU is going to win. I think they're the more physical team. I, I, I think they're out to prove something once again. Yep. You know, they did it last year, and they're not settling on that. They know what's going on, what's being said, and they're using And by the way, this is huge motivation. This is for huge them. motivation. Yeah, it's so good. I feel like the same thing's going to happen tonight. You know, Caitlin has been great for, for all of women's basketball. LSU has been great, and I'm tuning in. And I, I'm not sure how many Final Four girls matches I've watched in, in college. So... Good. So uh, they, they got uh, you. They got me. Yeah, okay. They got me. I'm in. Yeah, uh, I'm, so, and I know you're all about Juju Watkins and U.S. No, 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 of okay. course. Of course, I'm yeah. Juju all yeah. in, Don Staley all, right. all in. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to see them. That's really all I care about as far as that goes. But when you talk about tonight's game, in order for Iowa to win this game, though, Caitlin Clark has to be able to hit buckets at the rim, not just shoot threes. Agreed. Go back to last year. She probably had, man, she probably launched 20-something threes in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, she needs to be able to do a little bit more than to just out. be pulling up, pulling up, pulling up, pulling up. Because they're going to be waiting for her. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to be, they gonna be trying to, they're going to be trying to uh, make her do things that she hadn't done and shown them in the past. Yeah. Kim Mulkey's a hell of a coach. And she you, is. You mentioned the UCLA, I, I go back to the UCLA All thing right. for a second. You mentioned a coach at UCLA is kind of over here. She gets the flowers and the roses, and, and Kim gets nothing. Well, she got four championships. <laughs> right. <laughs> Including one last Including year. Including one right? last year yeah. and three at the Vegas. She yeah. got the so, latest. Come on. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. So <laughs> she, can get, she can do and say and treat the media to the degree how she feels because she deserved that. If she feels that they've been doing her and treating her and her players wrong, then, yeah, she has the... Defender guys. By the way, I think she won two at Louisiana Tech as, as a the player. point guard. As a player. And I think she won one for the USA as in gold medal. Yeah, so. I didn't even go through her entire body. Okay, so she's just like championship everywhere, everywhere right? She go. Okay. Now, as far as the game you go, I might watch it with Paul tonight. I don't know. I haven't decided, right. but I'm certainly going to be watching the USC game. Okay. This All one right. is interesting, but the USC <laughs> okay. game, no, number I, one I, versus I three. Okay, who you, you know? got in this game? I'm going to take LSU. Yeah. Because I don't think that Iowa has enough. Mm -hmm. They got Caitlin Clark, who only thing she's missing from her resume is a, a national championship, right? If she gets a national title, then maybe she goes down as the greatest ever in college basketball, uh, whatever you want to call it. Yep. That championship is key. All those box scores and those statistics and three points and this, that, and the other is cool. I, I embrace it. But if you ain't got that ring, then it's just a bunch of empty stats at the yeah. end of the no, day. I understand. You know, so... I got LSU. I, I think it stops here, though. I do. Right. I think it stops tonight. I was shocked when I saw this point spread because I was trying to guess the point spreads, as I tell you, and I, I thought LSU would be favored by five in yeah. this game. Seriously. I know LSU's the three seed versus the one seed, but how LSU underachieved all year, I don't know because I didn't watch them that closely, but they yeah, underachieved. South Carolina was in their way, too. No, though. no. Okay. I, and you're, you're right. But when I look at LSU... I look at Flaw J. Johnson, and she might not quite be Caitlin, but she's close. And she averaged 20 and 6 for them, and she can do stuff with the basketball, and you're going to see her on display full time tonight. And then I, I look at An Anissa Morrow comes in, and she's 17 with eight rebounds. And every time she comes in the game, she just changes the game. And need I neglect talking about Angel Reese? Because, by the way, speaking of charismatic, she's got great big personality. And it manifests on the floor, and it, it sparks the team, and she averages 15 and 14 rebounds. Well, they're, they're just 
they're too physical that's to me. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's too just physical. too much. And they're big, though. They're big. They're, big. Oh, they're, they're, they're long. Tall, okay. so, so Iowa has four starters, including Caitlin, who averaged seven boards a game. Seven, 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 seven. Mm. It, it's not good enough. So watch what's going to happen. They will pack it in a little tight zone, and they will dare LSU to make threes. And if LSU can just make 30% of their threes, they're going to romp and stomp again. They won the game last year by 17, and they look like they're just clearly a better basketball team yeah. overall. So I, I got them winning pretty easily. Me time. too. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.